So Patty, I had a very interesting weekend. I had the opportunity yesterday to watch The Last Dance, which is a Netflix documentary. Don't fall off your chair, but it's 10 episodes. Somehow I managed to get through all 10 episodes of the life and career of Michael Jordan, the basketball player. Now, my sports are, I started with baseball and then I transitioned into football. I'm a one sport woman. But the thing I really love that motivates me, not only personally, but motivates me in terms of how I can work with my clients better are Netflix documentaries on leadership, overcoming fear, dealing with challenges. So Michael Jordan, okay, we all know Michael Jordan. I did not watch basketball while he was playing, but oh my gosh, what I, I did. Loved. You you did and you watched him? Yeah. I mean, just the way his body moved when he was going up for a basket, I'm like, oh my gosh, this man is incredible. That's why he's the best. It's the way he handled emotion that impressed me more than anything. Many, many lessons, but just the one thing I wanted to share with you now, uh, because it hearkens to how we're working with C-suite executives, leaders of corporations, movements, business owners. He said, when somebody asked him, did he worry about whether he was going to make enough points in a game, get these baskets? He said, now why on earth would I worry about a basket, a throw that I haven't even made yet? Why would I do that? And the and the message in all of this is his secret sauce. He's able to live in the present moment. He's able to push away the sadness of the past. And I had no idea that his dad was shot in his yeah. car at a rest stop to take a little nap driving home one night. I had yeah. no idea. I learned that. Sadness of the past, move aside, no fear of the future. He didn't argue with people, supposedly. If somebody did something to him that he didn't like, he said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, let's just take it to the court. Anyway, so here's the point, and I know you, you've you worked in this for a long time. Can you address living in the present moment, please? Absolutely, Judy. It is, it's the key to staying out of fight or flight. And it's where all your creativity happens. And for athletes in particular, it's what they call being in the zone. And you can't be in that zone of mastery when you're in fear. And it's what sets them apart. And if you think of it um, in terms of the parallel to C-suite executives, right? They have a responsibility. Michael Jordan had a responsibility to himself and his teammates, right? They're being paid a lot of money to throw that basketball in the hoop. And they're responsible for each other as a team, right? Well, the same goes for our C-suite executives. They have a lot of financial responsibility. They have responsibilities to humans too. And things go wrong at, all the time, right? And then if you throw in an unexpected, what if there's a family emergency now, right? right? Or a relationship problem. Now, do you have that emotional mastery to stay present because all of your solutions and your creativity exist in the now moment and none other? So, I mean, this is, you're speaking my favorite language today, Judy, and I love it that you were watching Netflix, binging about Michael Jordan. See, that's not a waste of time, by the way. So I've always said, I want to make my love of watching television pay off somehow. So I go to these incredible Netflix documentaries. Okay, now let's take this a step farther. Yeah. When people are getting divorced, they go through two emotions that are critical to learn mastery of. And those two emotions are sadness over the past, because their marriage is ending, and fear over the future, not only what's going to happen with the kids, 
their money, um, you know, their soon-to-be former spouse, but they're fearful of letting their companies know sometimes. So they're really caught in this little fear box. How do they get out? Yeah, they're they you you just nailed it, Judy. They they feel completely isolated because um, you know sometimes work is the only outlet they have from it. But at the same time, now they're at work, but they're distracted and they're distracted because again, the brain is in this do like it's a duality. It's a bad duality. There's no good side of it, right? They're, they are, they're grieving. They're in the process of starting to grieve the loss of a relationship. And then they have this uncertainty. It's the uncertainty about the future. And it's that limbo, right? They know they're now anticipating um, that limbo. And so it is an extremely big challenge to become present. And I know that you, you know, you teach this in your recipe for a heart healthy divorce and that you must do the emotional work first because you need to be present to problem solve. And it also is part of healing too. And, you know, one of the, um, things that I see a lot, Judy, I'm sure you do also, is society brands divorce out of the gate as a fight. No one ever says, you know, I'm going to really put my negotiation skills to good use here, right? I'm going to go for a conflict resolution. Instead, it's like somebody gets, oh no, I'm going to get in the ring and take them down, right? Yes. And so there's another level of emotion. It's that you know, the anger and the fight. And for a minute that gives them a sense of power, right? Well, I'm going to fight. I'm going to give it all I've got. But at the end of the day, there's no power in, because there's no solution when you're in that frame of mind. I think it was you, Patty, about a week ago, we were talking and I, I said, oh my God, this is such a great phrase. It, 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 see if you can remember, instead of looking to litigate, look to resolve. Do you remember that conversation we had? I thought that was brilliant. I love that. Yes. It's, you know, it comes with setting an intention and um, instead of just letting things being, you know, saying, oh my gosh, I'm subject to everything going on around me. You're not, you can actually set an intention and it doesn't require both parties. This is the part where I think some people get derailed you can set an intention for resolution. And if that's your intention and you hold that and stay present, you have the ability to dictate the, the tempo and just the, you know, the overall resolution of it, because you, if think of it this way, I use this analogy because it's easy for tug of war. If you're getting ready for a tug of war and someone throws you the rope, you have a choice to pick it up. And then what's the intention there to drag the other person in the mud. There's no resolution in that. There's no resolution for you. And there's no resolution for them right now. You're both just getting muddy. And it's like, if you be the one to set the intention and I don't like the, the expression, be the bigger person. Uh, I would just say calling it being the emotionally intelligent person. Yeah. Um, because it doesn't mean that any one person or is, is any lesser. There's, you know, there's always an argument on both sides, but you can choose the emotional intelligent path, which is the best for you and all parties. And it's just a better headspace to be in when you're making decisions. Um, be, because again, the, the problem and the solution do not lie in any emotion. It's actually, it's like Michael Jordan on the shooting a foul shot. Yes. People are screaming if they're in a, a they're in, in, in an opponent's court, right? They're yeah. behind the net, or, you know, doing everything yes. they can, miss it, jinx, blah, 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 right? Whatever they can do. And so in that moment, right? Yes. He focuses, he's present that's not even going on. And that's the, the mastery of your emotions that you can learn. Anyone can learn it and they can learn it and you can learn it 
in a relatively short period of time so that when somebody, you know, there's going to be bombs dropped, there's going to be inflammatory text messages, lawyers are calling, right? Want boom, 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 boom. Now you're at work and these things are coming in. How do you handle this? Okay. Number so one, here, here, right. Yes. And here's how we talked about it. So yeah. I remember when we did the workshop on February 14th, yeah. I actually love that we chose that date and anybody listening to this, it was, it was Valentine's day, obviously, but we wanted to turn people's hearts around, even if they were going through a divorce and show everybody how they could feel better. And so I remember when I talked about learning conflict communication, learning to communicate through conflict so that there could be one reasonable voice. And that's when you used the tug of war. And I love that because it made so much sense. And, and now just to grab what you said about Michael Jordan, because I thought about this as I'm watching this documentary and and I think about it when I watch football too, but there's all the raving, screaming fans. Now, if you're at an away game and it's a playoff game, there's not many people in your corner. So you're going to hear one level of uh, screaming and yelling. Of course, if you're in your town playing, that's another more positive level of screaming. And it, it's always fascinated me how players can either block that out and work through that. Or if I remember correctly, Bill Belichick, uh, uh, manager of the, the coach of the New England Patriots. Patriots if, yeah. if, if, le if legend is correct, he actually plays loud screaming crowd noises when they're doing their practice for the biggest games. So yep. they can focus through that. Do you know that? Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's true. He's not the only one that that employs that tactic, actually. Wow. So they try to recreate the actual game situation so yeah. that they can, you know, master that and learn how to, you know, not get triggered. It's all about not getting triggered. <laughs> What's yeah. my trigger and how do you identify it and how can I get past it? Well, one of the things that I know you and I find really important, and I've been very passionate about this, and that is... It only takes one person to calm a divorce down. It really does. With what you said, focus and intention. If your intention is to resolve, your behavior will go towards that. And of course, you have the laws of the state behind you. As long as you want to comply with the laws of the state, you're good. But what do we... So the trick is, when you're dealing with a business owner, and you and I both own our own businesses, so we know what it's like if distraction attempts to creep in and throw us off our game, no, no, we're not going to let that happen. We're going to breathe. We're going to take a minute to refocus and we're going to know we have more power and control than we realize in that fearful second to communicate differently, to ask for time, to compartmentalize time, to make your work your respite. How do you do with, with your coaching clients? How do you do this? Oh, gosh. Well, it's for me, it's easy because I practice this myself. So um, it, I think it makes me, you know, uniquely qualified to kind of see it in them. And I can anticipate, you know, what areas where, you know, I'll say, okay, this is a trigger for you and this is a shadow. Um, but, you know, I also have, you know, people who work with me um, in my real estate business too. And so, you know, I've taught them about emotional intelligence. So they know they can come to me and say, I had someone recently, his, you know, his father had a stroke. I said, this is going to be the only thing that occupies your mind till you can get to him and see him. And I knew that has to be the priority, but it see as a business owner, it was my responsibility to create an atmosphere where he knew he could share that with me. And I wasn't going to have to say, you know, you're not going to make your numbers this week. You know, it's just having that it's empathy, Judy, at the end of the day, it's, it's empathy, but the empathy has to come from leadership because if they don't see it in the leadership, now you, you've got that, you know, separation gap. And um, people don't feel safe coming forward. And that's when you get distraction, a lack of productivity, 
Um, you know, and what if it's the leader who's going through it? If they're not communicating it, right, then then their team doesn't have the opportunity to give them empathy. And then they're witnessing behavior that's just not normal and they don't know why, right? And what can happen then is they start to self-project too and say, oh, is it us, right? So when people, when there's not an, enough transparency and vulnerability and the comfort to share and so that they can have empathy for each other, um, you know, that's where you get distraction. You know, all of these things that we talked about can just come into play and, and, you know, having an emotional wellness plan and just knowledge of emotional intelligence and practicing those skills really does equip you to handle anything, right? We're not just talking about divorce. There can be, you know, financial worries or, or a health concern, right? Any of those things that can really rock you at your core, you need tools to handle it. And I feel like it's not something, I mean, it wasn't anything I was taught. I, out of curiosity, went after it because I thought, you know, there's got to be a better way. You know, we can't all fall apart when there's a trauma. How do we really, really deal with it and then move past it and then be able to look to deal with it? And at the end of the day, it's a perspective and an awareness. And when I talk, that's why I said, I stress how quickly you can make these changes because when you have the awareness, then you know where to go next. And you're not, you don't feel like you're being dragged through it. Right. Yes. You, you just get this clarity and, and, and through that you're like, okay, now I can address it because you know, I have clarity. And again, you know, it doesn't feel like it's something that pulls you. And I think a lot of people going through a divorce do, they, they feel powerless and it's like, no, no, no. So we got to sh just show them how to get their power back. And then once you get it back, you learn how to stabilize there. And then you're conscious, you don't give it away again. And that's this, that's the secret sauce. Absolutely. You know, that's the thing. And it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. I think for everybody, there's the feeling of powerlessness. First of all, if it's their first divorce, it's foreign territory. They're using words they've never used before and hopefully don't ever want to use again. And they're making decisions that, you know, they, they never thought they would be making. So that being said, I was thinking on the way into work, I was thinking about in the old days, and I don't know if it really exists now as much, I think it still does in some respects, but when people rise to a certain level of professional um, accomplishment and, and position, I think in this culture, Patty, people are expected to be married. Do you find that to still be true? Well, I think it goes even further than that. They are expected to do everything successfully. Mm, yeah. It's, you know, and sometimes it can be societal. Sometimes it's ancestral, right? Where it's, hey, they're, you know, if you're not married by a certain age and have, you know, a family, you're not considered to be successful, right? And so- there are, there's, there's a lot of pressure in maintaining um, this, you know, perfection. That's an illusion. It, it, it's an illusion. There's no happiness there. There's no fulfillment there. And, um, you know, we need to, it's, it's all, it's all an inside job. Right. right. And, but again, like it, it depends on how long you've actually been living that way too. Right. Because when you suddenly go, uh oh, I have to take a, now a serious look at what I've been doing, that can be, you know, that can jolt you. But at the same time, it's a huge relief because deep down inside, you know, you've been really, you know, performing to please other people or to please society. And my gosh, that's just not a fulfilled existence. So, you know, sometimes when we say you can find the good in it, sometimes these shakeups make you go, okay, wait, how have I really been living my life? Right. And let me take a good look at this. And, um, you know, so there, you, there is, there is always something to look forward to that you can't see in the moment. 
And, you know, I think part of what you and I do is like show them that and give them that hope and then give them little stepping stones. And when they go step by step, I think that they can start to see inklings of the light and not carry, right. They're not being dragged. They're like, okay, I have to move forward yes. and, and, and separate this. And, you know, we all change is part of life, but it's not anything we're ever taught to deal with. So true. And, you know, and change that may see, seem daunting. So, you know, I love letting my clients know that they are really more in control than they know. There are tools, there are resources we can give them that will allow them to regain their composure look at this in a different way, lawyer down, don't lawyer up, lawyer down. Uh, no reason why you shouldn't be educated by a lawyer, but there are, the process just needs to be introduced to people. And I think that's where our passion is, is in showing people that there's actually a process that works. And even if your soon to be former spouse isn't into learning the process, it's fine. You're a leader. We're gonna teach you how to use your leadership skills to lead through the divorce process in a completely different way than you thought. And I love, and I know you do too, when we get those phone calls, it worked. It worked. Oh yeah. my gosh, it worked. Think of the people on our on our workshop on on Valentine's yeah. Day that actually did some of those steps on their own. It yeah. worked. Yeah, it does. It does. And and it's they, they can't see it at the moment. We know it. You know, I told you I always look at I always look at them as successful when I first bring them in. I see them as successful and then I go, okay, so how can I get them? How can I shine a little light to get them to the next step and the next step and the next step? So I have to believe that they can get there. And then I believe for them until they can get it themselves. Yes, absolutely. Right. So just, just to conclude, I think this is great. I'm so happy you were available to have this talk because okay. just for this one little message out there today, when anybody is approached with a divorce at, or has initiated, doesn't matter, it's the same thing. You are caught between two emotions, sadness over the past and fear of the future. And it's our jobs to move them aside and show you that path forward. The yep. recipe for a heart healthy divorce and the recipe for heart healthy coaching, Miss Positivity Influencer Coach. <laughs> That's right. absolutely the truth, Judy. All right. Well, let's go save America now, Patty. All right. I'm in. I'm in, Judy. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. Until we talk again. <laughs>